Well, the tech stocks have been under pressure because investors are rotating out of the growth areas and gravitating more toward the value side of the S&P 500, um, mainly because growth has done so well, tech has done so well, uh, that investors are just looking for better opportunities. And if we do end up seeing higher interest rates down the road because of additional stimulus, et cetera, then I think investors are worried that the intrinsic value of the tech stocks will have to come down. Um, so if you look to a chart of the XLK technology ETF, we're now hovering around the 50-day moving average. If weakness continues, then we could fall all the way to the 200-day, which would be another 9% decline from where we are right now. I think there's the potential for more downside. Uh, if the ETF breaks below its 50-day moving average, then that was near-term support that failed. And so as a result, the longer-term support could end up being challenged. So unless there are some uh, opportunities that an investor would rather not miss out on, then I would say there might be a potential for a better entry point later on. The, uh, it's the um, sector spider um, ETF for technology, and the ticker is XLK. Well, I think investors are not really worried about it because energy is one of the best performing sectors today and also is doing very well on a rolling nine-month basis. So I would say that the problem of cybersecurity is one that needs to be addressed and that the Biden administration needs to be emphasizing um, but as it relates specifically to the Colonial Pipeline and the oil prices on the East Coast, it does not appear as if Wall Street is too concerned. Um, well, energy prices are going up, in our opinion, mainly because the global economic outlook is improving. Uh, specifically, if we're looking for those kind of companies that should do well in this environment, well, then uh, on the... Um, Services side, Schlumberger SLB is one that we have highly ranked. Um, we also think that Total, the international integrated company, TOT, is expected to do fairly well. So in general, our belief is that there are some good investment opportunities in the energy space right now, and the prices are being driven more by um, fundamental expectations around the globe than they are concerns about higher prices related to the colonial pipeline. As I wrote in this week's uh, lead article of the uh, our Outlook publication, uh, I titled it Inflation Implications because the best performing groups in the past week uh, were energy, materials, financials, and industrials, which imply to me that investors are rotating their portfolios to take advantage of what they expect to be higher inflation. And so areas, uh, the commodity-oriented areas such as aluminum, steel, copper, commodity chemicals, and paper products are those that have been doing very well uh, and for which we have some favorable recommendations. So in general, I would say it's those that are in the materials and energy sectors that are likely to do the best because they tend to be inflation hedges that hold up very well in a rising inflationary environment. Uh, well, gold also ends up uh, being a pretty good uh, investment. It all depends, however, on how rapidly interest rates rise. Because gold does not pay a dividend, uh, does not offer a yield, and because it actually costs money to store the gold, uh, that traditionally uh, higher interest rates are not good, whereas inflation is good. I, I don't really follow them. I mean, I, I follow them from the standpoint of how, uh, you know, uh, Dodge, Dodge coin was created as a joke and now it's soaring. Uh, to me, I, I would tend to say that in general, the enthusiasm surrounding cryptocurrency is more of a, a bubble in the making, more of another reason why this bull market is getting a bit long in the tooth and is in need of at least a pullback, if not a correction, before it can continue to work its way higher.